Everybody. We've been doing a lot of breakdown videos of things that I've been building for our 4Runner uh, But I want to actually show you like a full walk around of the vehicle today So let's first check out what we've got in the trunk and then we'll work our way up to the front of the vehicle So I think the best feature of the 4Runners honestly for camping is how this window can go down I know it's a pretty big thing on Instagram where people use this as good photo opportunities, uh, but I think it's also just super functional for being able to get into the back of the vehicle. So now, as you can see, um, if you haven't seen my platform video already, I'll link that up on the top, but I have a six inch memory foam mattress sitting on top of that platform. Uh, there's no reason to sacrifice comfort when you're camping, so I got a thicker mattress. Um, if you saw in one of my recent videos as well, I just built this drawer system in the back. So this has been super convenient and adds functionality to the build because I've got this, this wood insert on the top that gives me a portable working space, which is really great. And then under it, I've got my whole drawer so I can store food, cookware, you know, a jet boil, those sorts of things, as well as maybe space for clothes or you know, however much space you need back here to be easily accessible. And those are locking slides, so now as you can see, when you're going down the road, it's not gonna bounce around or open too much like a maybe a typical drawer would. So, uh, this bed I think is like a 48 inch by 60 inch mattress, so it's pretty good size and it fits me and my wife perfectly fine so if you're trying to figure out how that would work in your situation um, my wife's about 5'4 and I'm about 6'2 6'3 so you know I'll show you kind of how I give myself a little more headroom because it does get a little bit tight once you get taller uh, but it still seems to work out just fine so in this mattress it folds so it's still fairly easy to like get into certain places so if I need to get into this corner to get to the outlet that's totally doable where the inverter is on the forerunner that's a stock inverter and then on this side I've still got my little door here where I just might keep some random things right now I don't have anything packed into the vehicle so and it doesn't really matter which side we go to we'll go to this side first so now on both sides um, the mattress comes right up to the back of the seats. On this side, it's my side because we move the um, passenger seat up a little bit. On the left side, we leave the driver's seat back some. And I'll show you kind of why we do that. But um, when we're sleeping, this is how it's laid out. We, we fold the mattress back, but then if uh, we're traveling, Gotta manhandle the mattress a little bit. So we get the mattress folded all the way back and now we have good access to all of these compartments in my platform. So we've got this center compartment, which is great for just storing miscellaneous things. And we've got the whole entire foot space as well to store stuff. So. Um, and then on both sides, we've got these hinging compartments so I typically take one side my wife takes the other side just a little closer view it's not a ton of space but it still does utilize the space to some degree 
and then you've got the whole foot space right now that headrest isn't folded down but when it is there's extra space there and then and then I've said in my platform video before that the center space is not very accessible and this is why but if you look under here here's that flap where there's some extra storage under here so if you really wanted to you could get at this but it's mainly just like the emergency use stuff you'd maybe store in there or uh, you know stuff you don't use but maybe even isn't emergency use since you can't get at it very quickly but if I needed to get into this big compartment right here I could just remove the whole entire mattress so it's a little easier to see but back here rather than me doing it from the front seats but the passenger seat I leave a lot farther forward than on the left because in the left I put my cooler and maybe a bin or two that we would typically store on the bed when we're driving and so we leave the left side or the driver's seat back some it's also nice because then in a pinch we could just move those bins onto the bed and drive somewhere if we needed to like get out of a certain situation quickly plus my wife doesn't really need the extra head or leg room but then on this side where you know it's a little bit snug if you're 6'2 to sleep in this um, by moving the seat forward you gain five or six inches and then it's quite comfortable to sleep in here so So Otis typically prefers to sleep on the bed with us, but we've got to force him to move at night so that it's not completely crammed. Otis, come on, can you climb up to your bed? Good boy, good boy. So like I was saying on this side, the cooler and the bins and stuff will sit just in front of the steering wheel here and then Otis gets the other half of the front and he's about a 60, 65 pound dog, but he still seems to have enough space. <laughs> Here's a good example how he can fit in a lot of smaller places. He's literally laying on like half of his bed right now on the armrest in the vehicle. So I still think that this is plenty of space. And then under his bed is still the foot space for the passenger seat so we're still able to store some things up in the front even though he's got his bed set up at night so come here otis otis come here otis come here lay down lay down down lay down down good boy so he's got enough space, but he'll typically curl up. He doesn't lay out straight and flat like this. So yeah, it works really great to have this dog platform in the front. Hey, down. Good boy, good boy. So that kind of rounds out the interior tour of the inside of the vehicle. And now I'll just go around the exterior and kind of mention some of the things that I've done to the exterior. So. So the first mod that I did to the exterior was these Raptor lights. I got a, a grade smoked out version so that it would match the aesthetic of the truck. And uh, they're amber lights, so they'll match my amber fog lights I get someday. But for now, I've just got the stock fog lights on here. So that was the first mod that I did. And those were only around 50 bucks, so they're a pretty affordable mod to start with. There's just another look at those three lights. I like the three pattern rather than the four, but it's whatever you prefer. The next thing I did was these RSG rock sliders. I really like these because they add a lot of protection to the sides of your truck when you're 
rocking through a trail. And I also really like this metal top plate because it helps to act as like a step rather than just these welded, I don't know, protective pipes, whatever you call those. Um, but then also if you look, these holes, they have like a jagged edge. And that's really handy too for getting good grip when you're stepping on the on the uh, step, I guess. So just a nice little addition. Um, since mine is the TRD Pro, there's a lot of really nice aesthetic accents that I don't think come on every vehicle. It's got the TRD Pro rims, uh, the badging's all blacked out. And then these lights, I believe, have like black trim inside them, like right here. This is all black. When I think in certain vehicles it's not blacked out, it's like a, a silver reflective coat. And then black mirror covers. I think those are also factory. And then the headlights too, they've got this black accenting in them. So I think all of the black accenting really gives it a more aggressive look. And then obviously the TRD Pro comes with the TRD Pro grill. That's a pretty standard upgrade as well as with the TRD Pro, you get this hood scoop. It's non-functioning, but it's still a nice aesthetic feature. Again, I haven't done too much. I'd really like to get an aftermarket front and rear bumpers eventually, um, but who knows when that'll happen since it's pretty expensive. And yeah, I just don't know when a good time to get those will be, but um, living in Minnesota, I just don't think I'll use those enough to actually get them. But who knows, maybe if a partnership arises or if I have the ability to take more trips, then I, I will get those. Um, and then this wasn't blacked out, this was all silver trim, so I just Plasti Dip that. And Plasti Dip's super nice for emblems, it's just super slick. Again, same thing with this tail light, you know, it's all blacked out. And then obviously another rock slider on this side. So the other big thing that I've done that's not an interior change is this roof rack. So the stock roof rack has silver roof rails, but I vinyl wrapped those roof rails. So it's really nice. It makes the blacked out look continue even through the roof rack. And then I bought the LFD roof cross rails or crossbars. I always get that mixed up. And they're super awesome because they allow you to mount basically anything you want to them. So if you've seen my video, I bought some carriage bolts. I've got these special turning nuts to kind of crank down my traction boards. So I mount that on that side. And then on this side, I have a Harbor Freight generic, uh, I think it's a 52 inch box. This is super handy because I just store a lot of random junk that I don't want in my trunk. So. Uh, it was like 120 bucks, I believe, um, but it's great because lots of storage. So just to give a little bit better perspective, um, this is kind of the random stuff that I keep in here. I've got like a, a blanket, some sockets, paracord. This is a little portable air pump, some work gloves, some jumper cables, my trunk netting some random bags, cloth, hammer, <laughs> bungee straps, tarp, all kinds of just random stuff that you don't want it laying around your trunk. So it's great to be able to just throw it up here. One thing I have noticed is if you can see this little lock hole here, it's already starting to rust. So you get what you pay for. And I know a lot of people really like Rome boxes and they also really like um, Pelican cases. So I think those will be an option in my future that I go for, but for now, I just wanted an affordable option like you guys have seen. Um, a lot of my builds right now are affor more affordable options, but, and that mounted to this really well. So that was super easy. Um, and I've got a video about that also up. Um, yeah, and then if you look right here, this is just a piece of metal flashing. It really helps to deflect the wind. And I don't hear much wind noise, it's great. Um, a lot of people are concerned about wind noise with boxes and stuff, and even with the traction boards, but I haven't had any problems, so I've been really happy with it. 
So those are basically all of the exterior mods that I've done to the truck so far. Um, it's always changing. It's always a build in progress. Um, I really hope to do a suspension upgrade soon as well as bigger tires but with parking ramps and things like that that you have to fit into. Um, that may be a bit of a challenge so. Thanks for checking out my video. If you liked the uh, description or you have any other questions about what I've done to the truck so far, drop a comment down below. I do as best I can to answer comments. I think most people would say that I, I do a good job of answering comments. So um, if you've got any questions or you've got feedback for me or you just want to shoot the breeze about something, then uh, feel free to comment down below. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this video and I'll catch you in the next one.